Masechet Yevamot, Daf Sadi Zayin. We begin the eleventh perek uh, that te- that teaches Nosin al ha'anusa ve'al ha'mefuta. If a man uh, rapes or seduces a woman, the point is he has a bia outside of marriage. <clears throat> he may then he is permitted to marry one of the relatives of the victim. Uh, normally, if someone, if, you, if someone marries one person, he, if he, someone marries a woman, he is prohibited from uh, marrying, being with uh, the sister, mother, daughter, grandmother of his wife. Uh, that's true if they are married. The Mishnah teaches here that's only true if they are married. But if it's um, if he has only be outside of marriage, then afterwards he could marry the relatives of the rape victim. However, the other uh, order, if, it, if the order is the opposite, um, and someone marries someone first, then um, and then he has uh, an extramarital affair with one of the relatives of his wife, then he would be chayav. He would be chayav karet uh, for, um, for for that. Okay, no se adam anusat aviv umfutat aviv. One case where it is permitted is if a, if a, if a father um, had, had be out with someone outside of marriage, that, that person's son is permitted to marry his father's rape victim. Uh, it's using rape or seduction as the usual case. Uh, the point is that it's the, the father was not married to her. If the father was married to her, then the son is permitted is prohibited. The son is prohibited from any of his father's wives, <clears throat> even after they are no longer married. Um, but if they were never married, then uh, just had bi'ah, then the son is permitted to marry. Anusat uh, beno, futat beno, or the other way around. If a son uh, is with a woman outside of marriage, then the father is afterwards permitted to marry that woman. Uh, that's Tanakama, the Biuda, Oser, Banusat Aviv, Mfutat Aviv, the Biuda disagrees and says uh, that a, a father's uh, victim is similar to his father's wife, and therefore the son is prohibited from ever marrying her after that. All right, that is the Mishnah, and the Gemara is going to first uh, bring a proof uh, a supporting baraita and then a source for how we know this. Tanena leha de tanurabanan anas isha muta lisa bita nasa isha asur lisa bita. This is a, a pretty clear formulation. If a person uh, f- uh, is, uh, uh, rapes a woman, he is permitted to marry that woman's daughter. But the other way around, and chron- chronologically, if he marries a woman, then he is prohibited from. Uh, uh, from uh, marrying the daughter, or even not marrying even any bia with the daughter. Uh, right. That's the the point. Is once one marries, then that's it. They makes um, that is official, and all relatives are prohibited. Hayav karet. But if the uh, that liaison goes first, extramarital, uh, then uh, then uh, the that does not prohibit the relatives. So he could. Marry one of the relatives afterwards. All right, that's clear. Now, Urminhu, Hanit An Min Haisha, Asur Beima, Ubita Uba Hota. Now, here's the problem. We have a Baraita that contradicts this, uh, that teaches uh, someone who is rumored to be with a certain uh, a certain woman. Uh, you know, some kind of substantial rumor. Uh, they mostly lived in small villages and, uh, you know, it wasn't that hard to figure out. Uh, and so, even if there's no uh, edim, uh, so rumored to be with a certain a woman, uh, he is then prohibited from ever marry from marrying uh, that woman's mother, daughter, or sister. So this is the opposite of the Mishnah. Mishnah said even if someone was with a woman, he is permitted uh, to marry the relatives. And here said it's pro- it says it's prohibited. And the answer is midrabanan. The prohibition is only only midrabanan. The Mishnah was talking about Doraita level, and uh, here it's saying on oh, Banan, you should not do it. Why? Uh, the the reason is because if someone was with a certain woman outside of marriage, then it's likely that that affair uh, will more than likely than not that that affair will continue, and therefore he's gonna if he ma- uh, marries that person's uh, sister, say, um, then the rabbis are afraid. Yeah, he's gonna be married to the sister, but that affair may continue. And while before he married the sister, it was no big deal. But now, after he married the sister, that would be a very big deal. 
And so the rabbi said, once one is rumored to be with someone, midra banan, uh, do not marry the relative. Okay. Now, v'chol hechadika isura midra banan tane nosin lechatechila, ki tenan matnitin lachar mita. Now a question, wait a second, but the Mishnah says nosin, which sounds like lechatechila, you can do it. Now, if there's a prohibition midra banan, I understand the mitra, uh, Mishnah wants to say, uh, um, is, is focusing on the biblical level, but just say, you know, patur. Uh, that usually means patur, but uh, the midra banan, it's not allowed. Patur aval asur. Right? Why does Mishnah say nosin? That, because that sounds like lechatechila, and there's no problem, and there's no midra banan either. And the answer is actually, the Mishnah could be talking about a case where it would be permitted lechatechila, when? In the case where, uh, uh, in the case after death. Uh, meaning, if a man is with a certain uh, woman outside of marriage, and then that woman dies. Uh, so then there's no problem. There's no, uh, no drabanan to apply. Then the person can marry that woman's uh, mother, uh, daughter, for sure, sister, because even if he was married to one of the sister, he would be allowed to marry the other sister after death. Uh, but the point is here that uh, whether there was a rumor, or even if he actually was with that woman, uh, rape or seduction or with, uh, with her outside of marriage, uh, there's no uh, dirabanan. So therefore the Mishnah, which says, Nos'in it could be talking about a case, is talking about a case where it was after death. If that woman is still alive, then in fact there would be a, a Isud Rabbanan, and that's what the Baraita was talking about, uh, so we're able to reconcile both of them. And that was source for this law. And the reason is because if you look in the parasha of the Arayot, and we have it here, Vayikra uh, chapter 20, uh, in um, most of the uh, Pesukim, it talks about Isha Sher Yishkav et Kalato, Yishkav. Uh, whereas, when it's talking about a wife's relatives, right, um, uh, then it uses the word Sher Yikach et Ishav et Ima, a wife and her mother, uh, and so on. So, uh, so, so the, since it says Yikach here, you see that the difference is Shachav means any lying, any Bi'ah would be prohibited within marriage or without or outside of marriage would be prohibited in other in other cases uh, but regarding one uh, regarding one one's wife's mother that would only be a problem of yikah meaning in marriage only if he is married to a woman, then he cannot take the mother. But if he is not married to a woman and only has uh, bia outside of marriage, then he would be permitted to the mother. That is, uh, that's the first derivation. Okay. Hold on, we have a problem because in that same pedic just below, here it's not talking about a wife's relatives, but rather one's own sister. And it says, So does that mean one is not allowed to marry a sister, but if it's not in marriage, it's permitted to be with her? That would be crazy. Um, uh, so that's impossible to read it that way. So therefore we say the word yikach means either in marriage or outside of marriage, and that refutes the previous proof. Says you're right, the word lakach, uh, when it says, uh, it's just stated, uh, as is, and actually has two meanings, and you can only tell the meaning from context. So where it's appropriate to translate it as marry, uh, then translate it as such. Where it's appropriate to translate as any lying, any bia, then translate it as such. So regarding sister, it means any, uh, not just marriage, but any uh, lying, any, any bia. Whereas when it comes to uh, wife's uh, um, relatives, there the problem would only be if it's a wife, uh, and her relatives, but not if it's a rape victim or seduction, uh, the relatives of that person are permitted. Okay, that's the first derivation. Second derivation. How do you know that if uh, someone rapes a woman, he is permitted to marry afterwards that rape victim's daughter? <clears throat> From here, Ketib. There are two pesukim that are similar. 
and we wonder like why do you need them both the first one says uh, that uh, one is prohibited to be with his own granddaughter uh, so that suggests that it'll be his own granddaughter but let's say it's his uh, a, a woman's granddaughter uh, for example uh, either could be his wife's granddaughter or uh, what we're going to end up seeing is that it means uh, someone he was with outside of marriage is granddaughter from a previous marriage. Uh, so from this, since it says here, only what your, your, uh, a person's own biological granddaughter is prohibited. It sounds like his granddaughter through marriage would be permitted. But there's another pasuk that says, Another pasuk says that a person, his wife, uh, is uh, the 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 uh, in, uh, the relative of his wife is is prohibited, meaning the wife's granddaughter. Let's say the wife had a granddaughter from a previous marriage. So if he marries this woman, he's not allowed to be with the granddaughter. So now it says it's not allowed, and over here he said it is allowed. So which one is it? Hakesad kan beonasin kan benisuin. Or rather, it must be that. The distinction is uh, where the first pasuk is talking about a rape victim, not a wife. Uh, and that's why um, it says only if it's your own granddaughter, a person's own, own granddaughter, whether uh, biologically, it doesn't matter if he had that granddaughter with his wife or outside of marriage, that would be prohibited. But the first pasuk then implies that if a man was with a woman not in marriage and that woman has uh, a granddaughter from another man, then that would be permitted. And that's the proof. There you go. That's what I was trying to prove. And the second basuk is saying, uh, if it's in within marriage, then that makes the wife's granddaughter prohibited. Okay, so that's pretty good proof. It explains the redundancy of these pesukim. And now we ask, Epuchana, hold on, maybe you could read it the opposite other way around and say that uh, this pasuk here is coming to prohibit the granddaughter of a woman he is with outside of marriage. It doesn't say Advat uh, Ishto. It says a woman. This is the, the rape victim. And so the rape victim's granddaughter from another marriage is prohibited to him. And the first pasuk that says only his own granddaughter is prohibited. And that would imply that his wife's granddaughter is permitted. And so you could equally resolve the contradiction the other way around. And we answer, no, Adayot She'er Keti Behu Benisuin the word she'er, which means flesh, uh, blood, a blood relation. Um, that, it says, that says that uh, regarding uh, the various adayot in Vayikra Yudchet. And so therefore, someone who's a blood relative is going to be more stringent than someone who's not a blood relative. So it makes sense to prohibit the um, blood relative, uh, which is, uh, I mean, actually relative through marriage. Uh, so the that's also called she'er, right? One, one's wife is called she'er. And so his wife's granddaughter would uh, make sense to prohibit that because that is she'er, whereas his uh, rape victim's granddaughter is not she'er. They never married. They are not related. And therefore, uh, it would make sense that the permis permission would be in that case. And so that is a second proof to the law of our Mishnah. Okay, now the end of the Mishnah mentioned that a biuda osed ba anusat aviv. If um, a father rapes someone, can the son uh, then marry that rape victim? Tanakama says yes. The biuda says no. Amar Rav Gidel, Amar Rav, my Tamad Rav Yehuda, what's his source? Tichtiv lo yikach ish et eshet aviv ve lo yigale kenaf aviv. The first half of the pasuk says a man may not marry his father's wife, but then it continues and says also don't uncover his the father's skirt. Uh, um, some kind of uh, euphemism for doing something else. So what is that? What is what is it adding? Kanaf shara aviv lo yegale the skirt, uh, not literally skirt, meaning the the, the clothing, the um, that was uncovered, that saw the father uncovered. One may not uh, uncover. Not when what the the skirt that saw the father may not um, be uncovered. The point is, uh, it's talking about the father's rape victim, since that she was uh, she was uncovered with the father, so the son is not allowed to be with her either. So that's the Behuda's proof that that is also not allowed. Okay. That pasuk was from 23.1. Um, and uh, but right before that, we can look at it inside. The pasuk uh, is talking about a man who uh, forces himself upon a na'ara betula. 
uh, rapes her, so he has to pay uh, the father Hamishim uh, Kasef. So you see, this is talking about rape right before. So therefore, in context, it makes sense to say that not only a wa- uh, father's wife, but also a uh, father's victim, rape victim, is also included in the prohibition, and the son cannot marry. Okay, good. That makes sense. And that's a, that's a, that's a proof for to uh, be Yehuda. But now, how about Rabbanan? How will they explain they, that pasuk? But Rabbanan, says, listen, if it was right back to back, then I would agree with you. But look, it says, in between. So this interrupts the flow, right? It should have said, if it came, that came right after pasuk 29, then fine. You know, switch these, the two halves of this pasuk around. But it doesn't say that. So rather, uh, must, this is not, this Yegale Kanaf Aviv is not connected to what came before. I mean, remember, they did not have chapter breaks. So these were added much, much later. So it doesn't matter if it's a different pedic. Um, okay, but nevertheless, there is a phrase uh, intervening. So rather, according to Rabbanan, what does Lo Yegale Kanaf Aviv come to include? Oh, it's what Rabbanan says. Uh, if a person's uncle died without children, and then his father is the Yavam. Uh, so then uh, the, they are waiting, right? They, they didn't do Yibum yet. So the father is supposed to eventually do Bi'ah with the uh, Yevama. If that son goes and has Bi'ah with the, it's, it's going to be his aunt, um, with that Shomedet Yavam, that is the Kanaf Aviv. All right. Umay Kanaf Aviv. And how does it mean Kanaf Aviv? Kanaf, a better translation would be like robe. Uh, the translation skirt means like the edge of the robe, which would be picked up. Uh, so what is, uh, what is that phrase referring to? Kanaf aviv lo yegale. It's referring to the Shomerit Yavam who is, uh, supposed to be with the father, right? Because there is a zika between them. And that zika is kind of like a marriage. Uh, so not only the father's full wife, but also the father's Shomerit Yavam. The son may not uncover. That's what he's doing with it. Okay, we challenge the Rabbanan on that. Wait, this Shomeret Yavam is also his aunt because it was the deceased, right? The deceased, that's uh, the son's uncle, is the one that died. And so the uncle's uh, wife is his aunt, and it's already prohibited as one of the Adayot. So you don't need another Pasuk to prohibit it. And the answer is, Lavor Aleha Bishne Lavin. Yes, in fact, he would, be, he would violate two prohibitions, one being his aunt, because one's aunt is prohibited, one's father's wife, one's uncle's wife is prohibited forever, even after he dies. Uh, and the second prohibition, that she is a yavam, yavama of uh, awaiting his own father, who is the yavam. Okay, but typically, we should yavama la shuk. Wait, there be another prohibition. If she is, in fact, a shomeret yavam, uh, she is not allowed to marry anybody in, in the world, except for the yavam. And so the son would be marrying outside. Uh, so that would be, uh, so we already have a, pro- a prohibition. And we say, oh yeah, so she'll have to, this person will violate three uh, negative prohibitions. Or, or let's say after the, the father dies, while before, but while she's awaiting Yibum, in the meantime the father dies, and let's say there's no other brothers uh, that can do Yibum. In that case, she's permitted to the Shuk, she's permitted to marry anyone, so that last Yavamala Shuk will fall away. Uh, but the other two uh, prohibitions will um, will still remain. Um, the yeah, because um, still is his aunt, and uh, she had been at least the father's yeva, um, yes, father's yevama. And that would be the Kenaf Aviv. Okay. Ach mea velo meem vehu baala deem veana berata de intete. The Gemara is now going to pose a series of riddles. They are very, very strange cases, and definitely not to be taken literally. Uh, she says these were riddles that people used to challenge each other with. Uh, they might be popular riddles, as one Midrash that says that these were challenges that the Queen of Sheba challenged with King, uh, challenged to King Shalomo. Uh, they were probably meant to sharpen the minds of the students to be able to think through uh, these things. Meidi has a nice uh, interpretation that they 
they serve to mock evildoers, someone who would, uh, who might or we might even think of uh, such uh, incestual relations. Uh, look at the um, really insane consequences of su of such things. Okay, but we're gonna not actually imagine these as real people, but rather think of all the possible marriage pos uh, think of the marriage possibilities as kind of mathematical uh, concepts and uh, what kinds of weird and interesting knots uh, one can make, kind of like a knot theory. Okay, and these are um, uh, respond answered by Rami Bar Chama, who was a, an Amora known for uh, asking and challenging others with uh, very uh, borderline and strange and cases that are completely theoretical. Okay, so all this should be uh, understood within the concept, con context of theoretical mind-bending riddles. That's what they are meant for. Okay, so here the first riddle is if a person comes and says, um, uh, a woman says, this, uh, this certain man is my paternal brother. That's easy. But not my maternal brother. Fine, that's easy to conceive. Um, but he is also Ba'ala De'em. He is also my mother's husband. And I am their daughter. How could you conceive of such a case? Uh, you can uh, have such a case, it's just that would be a, like Tanakama, who says that a son is allowed to marry his rape, his, mother, his father's rape victim, and not a biuda who says that that is prohibited. Uh, all right, that's all that it says. We could use a chart here to help us figure out this case. It would be as follows. Yaakov has a son, Ruben, from some woman who's not mentioned here. Uh, and then he also has a rape victim, uh, this woman uh, called Isha. Uh, Yaakov rapes her and has a daughter called the Bat. Afterwards, Reuven takes, marries that rape victim, which according to Tanakama is permitted. Okay, so that's it. That's the case. Now, this daughter is talking to Reuven and said, Hey, you are my paternal brother. That's true. Yaakov had a son, and, uh, um, uh, and Yaakov also raped this woman Isha and had a daughter. So they are paternal brothers, though not maternal brothers and uh, since they the Ruven afterwards married her so this is in fact her her uh her the, the his mother's husband and i am the daughter of his wife uh would they not that not their daughter it is not not the father uh but i am the i am the daughter of this person of your wife and all those things would be true, even though they are kind of um, uh, interesting. All right, that would be case number one. And now we get to the next case. A woman says, this person is my brother, and he's also my son. And I am also the sister of this uh, kid that I am carrying on my shoulders. How could you have such a case? This would only be possible in the case that would involve incest. And therefore, we're going to assume that a Jew is not going to do this uh, because we don't want anyone to do this. So we um, uh, we use a goy as an example, although actually non-Jews are also prohibited uh, regarding arayot. Um, but uh, to uh, construct even the theoretical case, so we use a goy um, if it's a case where someone has relations with his own daughter. So here is the diagram of this case. You have Esav, okay, good name for him, who uh, has a daughter. He has some woman that's not pictured here, has a daughter, Mahalat, and then he is with that daughter and that has a son and grandson, who's called Ben here. So Mahalat has this uh, child and can say to the child, hey, listen, I am your, uh, you are my brother and you're also my son. And uh, uh, also I am your sister. Uh, so all those uh, things are true insanely simultaneously. The next case is going to be uh, similar, but another generation, a man is with his granddaughter. And uh, so his um, 
great granddaughter here is going to be. Um, uh, let's see. Shelama lach beri bat achatech ana. So here, that granddaughter can say to the child, "Hello, you are my child, and you are also. I am also the daughter of your sister. Uh, in other words, I am also your niece. How could that be? How could a son has her son also?" Uh, be um, her uncle uh, as follows. Here you go. It's just, uh, her son. And uh, this child and Hagad are, in fact, a brother and sister. And so um, this would be uh, her, uh, the mother's mother's brother. Uh, so therefore, her, his mother is also his niece. All right. And uh, that's what we say, Mashiach la begoy, haba al bat bito, man with his granddaughter. Okay, next case. De la e de dalu davla li pol bechu seter peter. De hai de daren ahu bar, beana berat ahu. Uh, if, uh, this is a ri- riddle given to water drawers who are drawing waters in buckets. Uh, and uh, so let this cryptic uh, riddle fall upon you. It's addressed to water drawers because it's a very boring job, drawing water all day, and so you need something to keep your mind occupied. Uh, you know, they didn't have just like radios or uh, anything. So to occupy their mind while they're drawing water, they uh, would solve these riddles. So this is a good uh, proof for what she said that these are common uh, popular folk riddles that may not even be have been uh, not even originated in the Bet Midrash necessarily. And the riddle says, uh, This boy who I'm carrying here, so it's a small boy, uh, is my son. Okay. And I am uh, the daughter of his brother. In other words, I am his niece. Uh, so similar to the last case, Mashkachadla begoy haba al bat beno, a goy who is with his uh, granddaughter from his son. Uh, so here it would just be uh, uncle instead of aunt. So it's uh, basically the same as this case, except for Hagar being a uh, daughter, uh, is Elifaz, a son, and uh, therefore it's a otherwise the same construction, same relationship. Okay, next case. Baya, baya, me'ach vehu a vehu ba'al, vehu bar ba'al, vehu ba'ala de'em ve'ana berata de'itete, ve'la yahev pita le'achu yatme bene berate. There's a woman that comes and says, Woe is me, because I have this man, and this man is related to me in many ways. He is my brother, he's also my father, he's also my husband, and uh, he's also the son of my husband, and he's the husband of my mother, and I am the daughter of his wife, and yet he does not provide bread for his brothers, who are my sons, and they are orphans of mine, um, uh, of me, his daughter. And he is not taking care of them and feeding them, right? Despite all these relations, he is not actually the father of the of those daughters. How could you have such a case? Uh, if you really need to know what this case is, here is a description. Uh, you have uh, this basama and this person is called grandfather, Zaken, who have a son, Nochri, and Nochri with his mother has a daughter, Hagad, and then he is also with Hagad, although has no children there. And then the grandfather is with Hagad as well and has two sons. And so this woman, uh, talking to this Nochri, says, you are related to me in all these multiple ways, uh, but you are actually not the father of these two sons, uh, who are also his brothers, uh, and there, and you're not taking care of them. So despite the fact that she has all these, um, uh, is related in all these ways, still, he, she cannot demand that he pay for their food because he is not actually the father. Uh, so this is a good case, a good example of Me'idi said that, um, uh, uh, that, uh, these prohibited relations lead to no good, no good conclusions. Okay. Uh, next, Ana ve'at ache, Ana ve'avuch ache, Ana ve'imach ache, Mashkach adla begoi haba'al imo ve'odi memena shete banot, ve'chazar uba'al achat mehen, ve'od mena ben, ve'kariale achate de imma, ve'ka amrale hachi. 
How could you have a case where a woman would tell a certain man, uh, you and I are siblings, and your father and I are siblings, and your mother and I are siblings? Uh, well, you could have it in a case like this diagram, where um, you have a woman, Basemat, who has a son named Nohri. Notice he, uh, yeah, he's the only man here, except for this man uh, at the end. Okay, then uh, this guy is with his mother and have two daughters, and then he's with one of the daughters and has this son. This daughter can speak to this uh, son here and say uh, that we are uh, siblings because they have the same father. Your mother and I, that's these two, are also uh, siblings. They have the same mother. And your father and I, meaning these two people, are also siblings uh, because they also have the same mother. And uh, there you go. That is that case. All right, and finally, Ana ve'at bene ache. A woman tells a man, "You and I are first cousins." Ana ve'abuch bene ache. Your father and I are first cousins. Ana ve'imach bene ache. And your mother and I are also first cousins. Don't worry. In this case, we don't have to resolve to incest in order to create such a case. We can actually create such a case in a permitted way. How so? Kegon Reuven sheyesh lo shete banot. A man named Reuven has uh, two daughters. Vatas Shimon unzav hadaminai. His brother Shimon marries one of the daughters. This marrying his niece is fine. Vata bar Levi unzav hadaminai. And then Reuven's other brother Levi, his son, which was, uh, means uh, Le Reuven's nephew, uh, marries uh, the other one of the daughters, which would be his first cousin. And here, it's not a woman talking to a man, but rather these uh, two uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, kids who are, one is speaking to the other as follows. Here's Reuben who has two daughters. His brother marries one of them. His nephew, Yachsael here, marries the other and they have children named Nachshon and Chesron. Say, so Nachshon here is speaking to Chesron and says, hey, we are first cousins. That's true, right? Their mothers are sisters. And he says, also, your mother is my first cousin. Well, that's true because, um, uh, the, the, Le, that's Lea. His father is Reuven, and Nachshon's father is Shimon, and they are brothers, so that's, that's first cousins. And he says, also, your father is my first cousin, which is also true, that Nachshon's father is Yachsel, his father is Levi, and his father is Shimon, and they are brothers, so that makes them, Nachshon and Yachsel, first cousins. So, uh, there you go, we are first cousins, I'm first cousins with your mother, and I'm first cousins with your father, and all these are completely permitted relationships. And uh, there you go, at least we end off the last riddle with a uh, permitted example. The next Mishnah discusses the status of uh, brothers who were converts uh, regarding Yibum. You have a woman who converted and her sons converted along with her. Actually, in this first case, it doesn't really matter whether the mother converted or not. The point is you have two uh, people who were born to a non to non Jewish uh, a non Jewish mother? Uh, let's say the father is Jewish, so they are uh, paternal brothers uh, from a Jewish father, but their mother is not Jewish, and therefore these two kids were born not Jewish, and both of the sons convert, and then uh, they then one marries and dies without children. The surviving brother does not do yibum or chalitza because even though they have a paternal uh, they have the same father uh, who is Jewish, but once they convert, they become like new people. Their previous relationship uh, is uh, not legally recognized, and so they are not actually brothers. The Gemara will discuss, does this mean that they may not do Yibum? In other words, he may not take her at all? Uh, for sure, it's not. A, there's no mitzvah of Yibum. Uh, the question is, but could he, could one of the brothers marry his uh, brother's widow? Or uh, if he wanted, or is it prohibited? All right, that sounds simply like it's uh, actually prohibited. Uh, there would be some uh, some level of uh, erva, uh, even if uh, um, even if there's no mitzvah. Okay, but that will be subject to machloket. Second case, afilo horato shel rishon shelo biktusha veledato biktusha veashani horato veledato biktusha. And this is the same verdict is true that they do not do chalitza or yibum, even if. 
the first brother was uh, conceived where, before the mother converted, and uh, and he, the first brother, was given birth to after the mother converted, where, while the second brother is fully Jewish. Even so, even though the first brother was born after the mother's conversion, here the mother's conversion does matter, even though the first brother was born after the conversion, and the second brother was both conceived and born after the conversion. Nevertheless, because the first brother was conceived before the conversion, so uh, while the mother converted, the fetus also went, underwent a conversion. And therefore, since he was uh, the first uh, fetus, the first uh, child is a convert, while the second child is born Jewish, uh, again, their, their uh, biological uh, uh, relationship is null and void because the convert is n considered not a relation of his brother, and therefore there would be no uh, application of Yibum. And the same would be true for a maidservant who had sons while she was a maidservant, and then uh, she was freed and her sons were freed uh, because uh, slaves do not have legally recognized relationships um, and the, the con uh, freeing process is the same, equivalent to a conversion process, so that would be an equivalent case. And uh, apparently there was in fact such a case. B'nai Yudan, there was a certain slave woman named Yudan, Amta, and she had two sons while she was a maidservant, and then they were freed. And he is the lenient view here. He permitted them to marry each other's wives. So if they had been married to, um, if they had been married, and then, uh, let's say, divorced or died, then oh, the brothers can could take the each other's prior wives. Uh, this doesn't have to do be in Yibum, if, 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 if they had children, and those it says as if they are two unrelated men, uh, two unrelated men married to two unrelated women. If one of them divorces or dies, the other man is allowed to take the prior wife of the, uh, of the other guy. Uh, so he considered them not to be related. Amaleh says, wait a second, how could you do that? Avshashat said, that's prohibited. I said, so what? Right? So Rav Sheshat is my colleague. I don't have to, you know, it's not my authority. So he permitted, he prohibited, I permit. Good. Okay, so now we're going to analyze their machloket. What is the scope of it? Everyone agrees, even Rav Sheshat, too stringent, would agree that um, if they only are only paternal siblings, but have different mothers, uh, different non-Jewish mothers, and then these two kids converted. So everyone agrees that this is permitted because uh, regarding uh, non-Jews, uh, their paternity uh, is uh, not legally recognized. So the fact that they have the same father uh, does not make them related, and once they convert, so then there are new people and their prior same father uh, does make, makes has, is not significant. Whereas if they have the same mother, same non-Jewish mother, and they have different fathers, then everyone agrees that that is prohibited because uh, relation with them, uh, their relationship with their mother is more obvious. Everyone knows who the mother is, not necessarily who the father is. And so this will be um, more similar to a, to a Jew, um, uh, a Jewish relation. Um, uh, this could be only the Rabbanan because of the optics, as we'll see in a second. But the point is everyone agrees that if they have the same mother only and different fathers, uh, then it would be after they convert, they would still be prohibited to take each other's wives. Uh, the machloket is when they have both the same father and the same mother. This is a par little paradoxical because this would seem like they are more related and therefore it should be worse than if they have only the same mother. Uh, but the reasoning is as follows, Man de the one who says it's permitted, that would be Revi Ahabad Yaakov, he says, because they are known by the father, right? Everyone says, These are the sons of Mr. 
so and so, and since they're known by the father, so really the mother doesn't make a difference. So this would be the same as if they had were only uh, siblings from the father, and that is permitted. And Rav says, no, the people, siblings that are full siblings, are also sometimes known as the sons of so and so, the mother. And so therefore, we have to prohibit them as the um, following the mother. Okay, so that's the machlok. And now we're going to have a challenge to Rabbi Acha Rav Achabad Yaakov, who permits from our Mishnah. Uh, hold on, before that, Others take uh, interpret Rav Achabad Yaakov more leniently, that he would permit one brother to take the wife of his uh, other brother after they divorce or he dies, um, even if they are only siblings by their mother. Because the basic principle that someone who converts is like a newborn baby, and therefore it doesn't matter what their previous status was, if they, the fact that they had previously a brother uh, is considered no longer legally related. And so, uh, basically, Rav Yaakov permits completely in all cases, on, uh, even Doraita and Rabbanan. All right, now a, a challenge to Rav Yaakov Yaakov from the Mishnah. Tenan, Hagiyore Shinit Kayeru Baneha Imaha Lo Chosin Velo Meya Bemin. So, uh, the Mishnah said that uh, so two siblings who converted, they have the same mother here, uh, they do not do chalitza or yibum. They, in this case, they have the same father as well. So this question would uh, apply to either version of Rav Achabar Yaakov, um, who permits in, in, uh, when they are the same uh, parents. Now the question is, this Mishnah says, do not do yibum. That sounds like uh, it's prohibited from to do yibum. But why? Uh, they converted, right? right? The brothers both converted. And so, and they have the same uh, parents. So Rav Irachab said they are permitted. Uh, one is permitted to take the wife of the other. So, No, it doesn't mean that they are, he would be prohibited, just that there is no mitzvah to do, no need to do chalitza, no mitzvah to do yibum. And uh, therefore, the uh, widow is permitted to marry anyone. Uh, but, in fact, she could, in fact, marry the surviving brother. So they could do it. There's no prohibition. That is consistent with Rav Chabad Yaakov. It's just that because their uh, the fact that their sibling status from their father is no longer relevant, is no longer recognized, so there's, it's not considered yibum. They're not related at all. It's like uh, two people aren't related. One man can, take, can but need, does not need to take the, wife, the widow of the other. Okay, but here, how can we read the continuation of the Mishnah that says, even in a case where the first uh, son was uh, uh, conceived, not Jewish, but born after the, after the conversion? What do you mean, Afilu? If we, if we follow the original interpretation, that means that, that Yibum is prohibited. Then it would make sense. Even though the first son was conceived while the mother was not Jewish, but born while the mother was Jewish. And the second was conceived and born when the mother was Jewish. In that case, they are actually less connected uh, because it's like it's like they have two different mothers. One of them was conceived when the mother was, wasn't Jewish. The second one was conceived when the mother was Jewish. And since the mother went through a conversion, in the meantime, it's like the mother is a newborn. So in that case, it's as if they have two different mothers. We might have thought that, well, since they have two different mothers, so then they would be, it would be permitted uh, for one to take the, the uh, um, wife of the other. And we say, no, even so, Afilu in this case is prohibited. So if we say it's about prohibition, then we can read it well. But according to this interpretation of Rachel Barakov, who just said that he there's no mitzvah yibum, but they are permitted to take each other. So what do you mean, Afilu? It should be all the more so uh, when the mother converted between uh, the first and second child, 
uh, child's conceptions, uh, then it's as if they have two different mothers. So for sure, one brother would be permitted to take the wife of the other. And the answer is, No, but in the second case, in another aspect, they are more closely connected, the two siblings, because both of them were uh, born while the, after the mother converted. So they do kind of look like they are Jewish siblings. And so it's easy to confuse them with uh, two people who are born fully Jewish, uh, conceived and born Jewish. Um, and, uh, and so even, therefore we might have thought to prohibit because it's confusing with the case of two Jews where one is not allowed to take his brother's wife. Uh, so that's why it says, Afilu, nevertheless, it's permitted. Okay, a second version of this discussion where instead of a, a question and an answer, we switch around the, these two reasonings and we present it as a, an attempted proof and then we say, no, it's not a proof. You know what? It makes sense what Rav Achabar Yaakov said, that according to the Mishnah, one brother is permitted, but doesn't need to, take the wife of the other uh, after he dies. Because look at, look at the structure. The second case says, Afilu. If you say that Rav Achaz reading, that is permitted for one to take the wife of the other. So then it can read well. Even though both of them, both uh, sons were born uh, after the mother converted, and so they are quite similar. Uh, and therefore it's easy for it to look like and be mixed up with a case of two fully full Jews who are brothers. Nevertheless, it's still okay it's for, for one to take the wife of the other. Uh, but if you talk, if you say that it's prohibited, why would you say even in the second case? In the second case, they're more similar to each other, so it should be the opposite. And the answer is it's a, it reads like this in the second case, even though uh, the first was conceived. Um, when the mother was not Jewish, and then the sec and the second kid was conceived after the mother did convert, so their conceptions were at different times. So it's like they had two different mothers. When the mother converts in between, it's like a new person. So uh, they are almost like they are not the two siblings are less related to each other, and so you might think that therefore maybe it's um, permitted. Uh, so therefore, it says, no, even so, uh, they are prohibited to not only uh, don't have to do Yibum, but actually prohibited from taking each other. So you know what? We can read it both ways. So therefore, the Mishnah is neither a uh, proof nor a disproof to Rav Acha Bar Yaakov. Baruch Adonai Amen ve'amen.